Maybe smartphones aren't the evil they've been said to be. That's the case some psychologists are making, challenging the much-hyped book, recently out by social psychologist Jonathan Haidt. Now, Haidt argues in his new book, The Anxious Generation, how the great rewiring of childhood is causing an epidemic of mental illness, that smartphones and social media are contributing to a surge of suffering in teens. But according to psychologists at Stetson University, Christopher Ferguson, it's not clear that there has actually been an international increase in mental illness among young people. And while suicide rates have risen in the United States in recent years, it's not a phenomenon specific to teens. Hate makes the case that phones and addicting social media platforms take young people away from activities that are crucial for healthy child development, like outdoor play, in-person conversations with peers, and even sleep. He also says social media has drained adolescents' attention spans and erodes their self-confidence. But Haidt's critics argue that some of his figures are cherry-picked and are contradicted by stronger data per Vox based on declining youth suicide rates in Europe. His critics argue that it's unclear if there is, in fact, a growing teen mental health crisis. So this book is very hot right now. Um, Jonathan Haidt is a very um, interesting and I think well-liked, very smart figure um, who's been on the kind of a media psychologist um, expert person for a while. I know him well. I debated him actually on this subject because I wrote a book about the regulation of social media. So he and I disagree here, uh, but I think he's you know worth responding to. And he you know he has done a good job marshaling evidence that he thinks should point to the fact that social media is is harming children. On the other side, people will say, well, some of this data doesn't actually show this. Um, the, the increase in suicides is actually not concentrated among teenagers. Our, yeah. our survey results of young people saying they're more depressed over time, is that reflective of actual worsening mental health outcomes? Is it reflective of the language of trauma and mental health becoming more a part of our everyday vocabulary and just being destigmatized is a big part of what I think it is, frankly. Um, but he and I have debated this subject multiple times. Yeah. So this is the, the pushback uh, to height is happening because Eric Levitz wrote this piece in Vox, breaking down some of the kind of analytical choices that he makes, and some of which he's arguing here are flawed. I think one of the big ones is the suicide rate issue. It's not just that the rate, uh, higher suicide rate uh, is across age groups, not just teens, who are supposed to be uniquely affected by the rise of cell phone use in around 2010, 12, 13 era. But th those results are not reflected in Europe where you saw those same tr cell phone trends. So what does it mean if American teens have more suicidal ideation over that period of time, but European teens, right. frankly, have a decline in their suicide rate over that exact same period of time? Right. I remember uh, people saying the same thing, pointing to that when, um, when the media used to talk very frequently about how violent video games were causing violence. And like, well, shouldn't Japan be the most violent <laughs> society on Earth then? Yeah, <laughs> in fact, yeah. it's the opposite. Yeah. And so there's some of these other ones, um, like the uh, fact that uh, only about 15% uh, of the variation in mental health between teens is accounted for by the self-reported um, uh, studies of social media use and the correlation between poor mental health. Um, so. Yeah, there's yeah. A something there. I don't think that anybody would deny that just from your personal experience that social media can have a negative impact on your health. But the analysis shows that you have to come up with another 85% of what of, of yeah. what is uh, causing that kind of outcome. And some of the reports um, that he cites, there is an issue with perhaps self-reporting where um, – so when you, when you ask college kids to stop using social media for a period of time uh, and then report to you about whether or not their mental health outcomes are better, the study suggests that that is true. But a lot of the kids drop out of those studies. Our kids who are stopping using their social media feeling worse yeah. and then that's causing them to drop out of the study. Maybe, maybe not. You know, we don't know. But it does seem like what Eric Levitt is saying here is that it's not that there, there isn't some evidence of a negative impact of, so, of social media on young people, but that it perhaps is overstated significantly yeah. by this kind of a Jonathan Haidt argument. Right, and, and what I like about his book is that he does talk about, look, I, th I think it's good and healthy for all people, for young people to put down their phones sometimes, to log off, to go get more exercise and sunshine and spend time outdoors and converse with friends in person. Sure. Um, I think some of what he's talking about is just common sense parenting, you know, empower families to, you know, make smart, but, that, but that's not unique to the technology, right? If you're no. watching the TV all day, 
if you're playing Game Boy in the classroom, it's not a Game Boy anymore, you're playing your Nintendo Switch in the classroom instead of paying attention, then yes, the distraction of the technology is, is bad, but that's not, that's not again, that's, there's nothing special about smartphones in that case. Yeah, that's what I don't understand. We both say smartphones bizarre. are ruining school. Well, okay, I'm, you should not be looking at your smartphone while you're supposed to be listening, but in the same way that you shouldn't be playing video games while you're supposed yeah, to when, listen. When, doesn't mean video games are bad. When I was growing up, the trope in teen movies was that the kid who was kind of introverted and not focused in class had a comic book inside of his textbook and was secretly reading his right. comic book in class. Now I'm supposed to believe that you know, that then it was the comic book is some big threat to this person's social development, and now it's a right. cell phone. When we were kids, yeah, my, I, my, my big brother was a nerd. He was in the back, we, we grew up in Kenya, and he would be in the back of the safari van on his Game Boy, not looking at the animals around us, head in that, or head in a, in a yeah. Star Trek book or in Hardy Boys book or whatever it was. He was a big reader, he liked video games, and there have always been ways to make those technologies portable and take you out of everyday life. But the question of whether or not you are kind of temperamentally predisposed to being that kind of person and whether or not there are interventions that parents or family members or whomever should make to encourage you to have a different kind of orientation is completely separate and apart from the technology. And now we're getting to a yeah. place where this is being used as an argument to ban certain kinds of technologies because for whatever reason, parents don't seem to feel able to intervene between a technology and their kids, even though I presume they're paying for the cell phone plan, they're paying for the thousand dollar phones in the first instance. I just don't understand how this has become a kind of public issue of public concern as opposed to private family management. Right. The area where I have common ground with him is we could certainly undo some of the harmful government interventions that I think tipped the scales in favor of having kids more online, more logged on, more screen focused all the time, which is to say that they basically slowly, gradually criminalized letting young people play outside by themselves, walk to school, you know, do these routinely make the news when some, some parents are, get a child services investigation because their 14 year old was playing at the park by themselves or playing in their own backyard by themselves. Um, this is obviously an issue that massively impacts low income people who have to work and let, let older siblings babysit the rest of the family. Yeah. It is totally safe and normal for kids to do that. Um, kids benefit from free, unstructured outdoor playtime, from right. walking to school. That's something so many of us did when we were kids. And it, it has been broadly criminalized to an extent that I think is very bad and very yeah. unhealthy. And I would, I would encourage us to undo some of those. And things. are we funding public spaces? No. We are defunding the New York City library system at the same time as that we're putting that funding in the police system. The New York libraries are closed on the weekends, the time at which people want to use them. Are we funding public parks? Are we, are we making free public spaces available to kids or are we setting kids up to become Tamir Rice's because when they're playing in those parks, they're seen as suspicious individuals that are going to be shot upon seconds of police driving up on the scene. These are things that are all affecting our ability to act as communities and social places. Um, there was a, a great report on what happened to the public swimming pool uh, after uh, integration, where there used to be thousands of pools in every community all across America that were really central uh, meeting places for Americans to come and socialize with each other, but people prefer to close down their swimming pool whether, rather than to allow there to be in integration. There has been a lot of excellent research on the way that bowling alleys used to serve as points of community for um, in municipalities and how th th those have gone the way of the dinosaur. It's very expensive to leave the house yeah. at all. Um, so I do think it's worth focusing on that as opposed to kind of draconian limitations on technology in the first instance. But let us know what you think about some of this reporting around uh, Jonathan Haidt's work and stick around. We've got a lot more rising for you coming up next.